Um, I'm not entirely sure uh, what all we're going to touch on in this uh, of the discussion items listed. Kind of depends on uh, willingness of participants, I guess, to both of yours. Look, all that. Thank you very much. Okay, never mind. We'll be talking about it. Later. So, starting off, um, Keith Hedges, our human resources director, is here to discuss a uh, update. From the wellness committee. Yeah, it's a real small one. The policy currently, which one do I have? States that a maximum of 160 points can be earned each month for each wellness activity to a maximum of two per year. They want to change it to a maximum of 160 points can be earned each month, uh, taking out um, per day. The, no, the per activity. Okay. So mm. I don't have a problem with that. No. Thank you. <laughs> oh, by the way, I think I forgot to mention that the meeting is recorded both audio and visual. Um, very good. So, what needs to happen? Do we need to pass out a meeting, or is that just a? Uh, no, uh, that's an internal. Yeah, just an internal. Okay. So draw it up. I just draw it up. Yep. Sounds good. Twenty eighteen meeting schedule. Uh, let's. So are we liking the, first of all, weekly work sessions? I generally still find that helpful. So stay on with Mondays. What about the noontime meetings? As far as I know, Mr. Scully's the only person that's complaining about mm -hmm. the meeting at noon. I know some of the employees may have a little bit, but you guys are here, but <laughs> what do you think? I mean, it's either way, move it up to 10 and then we'll be able to complain that it's at 10. Right. I kind of like the noontime meeting myself. Wish more some of I'm fine with whatever you decide. I don't care. I like it. My other problem is, is I end up not eating and I get angry. Yeah. But other than that, you do. But. <laughs> That's a real disease in our ass. <laughs> Have a little snack. <laughs> yeah, I need to get Part of your problem is your juice. That's not the problem. Yes. I would just say that I've heard this from other people who are not retired and can't get to either this meeting or to the commissioner's meeting that having it at noon is not convenient for people who are working. Right. So, this is a different kind of meeting. But and we're not going to be able to move that outside of work hours, so. Well, yeah. Well, we could, like, hypothetically, we could put it in the evening, and then we would have to have a sheriff's deputy here at night, and then yeah, they've had they've had meetings in the evening, and nobody showed up to those. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I think our meetings generally have been fairly well attended. I mean, yeah, comparatively, <laughs> you know. Compared to the past, yeah. Yeah. And part of the main reason we moved it to noon, as I recall, was because people telling us they could come to meetings on their lunch break. So, because previously it was like at 10 o'clock and they, really, if anything, our meetings I think have attended better than they were. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I mean, we aim to entertain everybody, <coughs> and so that's part of it too. <laughs> yes, uh, okay, so work sessions remain every Monday <coughs> at noon, correct? Yep. How about Wednesday meetings continue on with the second and fourth Wednesdays of every month. Fine with that. Fine. Also at noon? Sure. All right, yeah. then basically everything remains the same. Will there be any holidays we'll have to work, at, <coughs> work through right now? Oh, and CCAP, we might as well just prepare our town on that. So we'll skip the Mondays around CCAP. Mm -hmm. um, and Wednesdays, we have a couple holidays. Yeah, I don't, I mean, we've, we've, we've had a lot of luck with that this year, so. One of those ones that you have to skip for the meetings, can you, are you just going to skip the meeting for that week altogether then? Like the work session that, for instance, next Monday's work session is during CCAP. Regardless of whether there are one or two commissioners here, we're just going to cancel that work mm -hmm. session, correct? But they'll all be here on Wednesday for the correct. commissioner's meeting. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you were looking at CCAP schedules in next year's. Yeah, we, we will be. Right. 
Yeah, I will be, and then they just won't be listed. Just won't be there. Okay, I think that's <clears throat> because you're already going up meetings from what you were a year ago by doing them every week. Mm -hmm. uh, those weeks that you're gone to try to pile everything in once you get it back into the office for the last couple of days, the week is tough. To yeah. All right, and that's the only two that we set, right? Prison board is set by prison board, et cetera. Salary board, oh, what about salary board? Salary board is always the second and fourth month by county code. Okay. Any time we're saying 11.30 is working. I can only think of one or maybe two times where it ran over. Yeah, usually it's pretty quick. Okay, very good. All right, so <clears throat> Attorney Shree was the next person on the agenda, and he's outside the door talking right now. So let's, uh, let me jump to, all right, anything else on uh, 2018? <coughs> all right, very good. Um, briefly, let me introduce the hotel rates concept, uh, and then return to the Attorney Tree if you have a comment on it. And, so basically the idea is this, DHF, the Human Services, follows the statewide, uh, I believe, assessments and lodging policy that the state puts out. There's varying rates on what hotel um, reimbursement and those charges can be approved, and that's set by the state. And so she asked us to pass that in the next public meeting for Human Services. Uh, at the same time, I have thought maybe it would just make sense for the entire county to move on to the same rates as the um, state sets, since they've already done all the homework on what the end should be. So, without these, <coughs> we'll pass one down to Judy. <coughs> so, if the commissioners are in agreement to just passing uh, some language that Attorney Sharif can write up uh, that would tie our reimbursement rate to the state's rate, and we could do that at the next meeting. Attorney Sharif, how complicated is that? No, it's doable. We can get that put together quick. Paul, this thing laid out actually upstairs in the hearing. Um, we broke for lunch late, but now this is uh, something we can do. Easily. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Just uh, to make sure this is employee business travel. Is yeah. This right. Okay. So this is going to supersede what we have for travel policy. That's what I'm thinking. And just make it a blanket. Do, so do employees still have the right, right to come to the commissioners and ask for it to be waived? I would assume. Like yeah. the current policy does. Okay. Yeah. So if you're at a conference and your conference is there, and that's okay. Yeah. I don't think so. Anything else you see? <coughs> I mean, I, I didn't really compare it to our current rates. Um, is it? I know it's a little more, but is it pretty comparable? Do you have any other concerns? No. Okay. Commissioners, do you have any concerns? No. Um, while I was, we were sitting here talking before the meeting, we also thought that we would look and see how far off the sustenance rate is. Is that right? Or subsistence, whatever. Um, Subsistence rate. So the state also sets a subsistence rate, which I assume is meals. Um, really, John, maybe what we should do is just take a look at this Commonwealth travel and subsistence rate and see what we want to tie directly to that policy. I don't know what our current policy is, but this is pretty comprehensive in terms of here's the amount of money you can get in a 24 hour period. Um, Know, blah blah blah, car rentals. Obviously, a lot of it's not relevant and could just be cut, but there are other portions of it that I think would make sense. Yeah, that, that <coughs> is no problem at all. Oh, there's something in here about fines. <laughs> uh, parking fines, moving vehicle violation fines are not reimbursable. Yeah, stuff like that. I, mean, I, don't, I haven't looked at our policy, but I would suspect that you could essentially just merge that and incorporate by reference. You know, this is all about basically publish it, right? So it keeps from the staff running process of update, update. Exactly. Fantastic. Yep, keeps us out of the business of updating and puts that policy in the state. So, do you do need you? a copy of our current travel policy? I believe I have a copy of that. Okay. 
I haven't, I've not seen this before, read through it, so I don't know, but one of the things that one sheriff's department and a couple others were asking before, I'm not a favorite, but they had asked about allowing people to skip meals during the day and total them up so they could have so much at the end of the day to do the prime rib. I don't know if this allows you to pyramid your meals or not. I was in favor of doing that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it does not, the way the state's policy is, does not allow you to do that, okay. I believe. All right, good. I, I just skimmed it, good. but I thought it said that uh, you have to turn your receipts per meal and meal is set. I mean, if it's dinner, it's such and such a dollar figure. If okay. it's lunch, it's such and such a dollar okay. figure. So, yeah, I'm not in favor of that either. All right. <clears throat> so it sounds like we have tacit approval to go ahead and have you draft up language. Okay, good. Um, let's go back to the right to know policy slash internet usage policy. And for that, I'll turn over to Attorney Shreve. I printed out copies of the uh, guest terms of use for wireless internet access for each of you. The, um, <coughs> the deal is that we currently don't allow people outside of Warren County government to get on our internet. Of course, this poses problems for um, <clears throat> guest speakers at events like this, etc. Um, in addition, um, I believe the personal device usage is not currently defined in our policy, as I recall. So therefore, this is this and the right to know is we're overhauling it all together. And Ask the attorney to present us with what he's suggesting. Well, uh, I mean, first of all, um, I'm in a lot of other courthouses, and it's pretty standard to be able to jump on. As long as you go, you accept the terms of use, whatever they are, which is very similar to what put together. You're on, you're fine, no problem. It's a binding contract, and you're essentially, the county's not looking at anything coming back. Um, as far as where the origins of this policy came from, I went on. A lot of the standard terms that need to be in these, a lot of the, the limited sphere of liability issues. As we are not the provider, we are just the, essentially the host of the email. What things we could be looking at, try to put language in there to deal with that. Uh, pull a lot of model policies used to be utilized by um, other counties and utilizing uh, LexisNexis to see generally what things should be in there. Uh, obviously, this is a lot less than some big corporate internet usage policy would be, but it's on par and actually a little bit more tough and a little bit beefier than what you're going to find in, say, up the road in McKean County, one of the policies I looked at. I feel comfortable with it. I mean, I'll be very honest, a lot of it's straight legalese, but it, it essentially protects us from improper, stupid things that someone on our internet, if they try to do it, makes it, it obviously it establishes that contractual uh, dynamic where we can essentially justify kicking someone off our internet, uh, blocking someone on our internet, and also uh, intends to limit our um, our warranties and thus our liability if someone were to go and do some effort starting type of damage. But it's highly <coughs> likely most of this stuff will never be will never be operative, will never be needed, but it's it's essentially the think of it like insurance, yeah. You're not, you rarely use it, but you want the proper thing, the updated thing, the proper terms in there when you need them to protect yourself. So that's what I did uh, for talking. Again, a little longer than our other county counterparts. I mean, that's pretty much seven pages. Um, a lot less than McDonald's 50, but a lot more than any other county. And <coughs> real focused protection in terms of third party actions in there. So. I'm comfortable with it. I recommend it. Uh, I think it flows a lot with our work to know policy and just trying to protect the county. If you want to, uh, you, were, you were referred to the device use policy. Um, that is something I feel should generally probably be more appropriate in the employee handbook. Um, but the terms, as far as these terms go, will be binding on no matter what device it is on the internet. It just it doesn't cross over with that employee employee nexus. It's just that it covers everybody else, any device. Okay. That specific part should probably remain in the handbook. Sure. I have a question. Sure. Has our IT department and Bill Gallagher reviewed this? I am not aware if Bill has reviewed it. I'd like to talk to him today. Um, 
I've been in hearing since 8.30 this morning, I got there. Um, I'm probably going to be done around, I'd estimate, I'd estimate two, so I kind of want to stop in IT and run it through him. I don't think any policy, given Bill's, um, his expertise you know, on the matter, I don't think anything touching technology internet should be passed without his eyes having given it approval. Agreed. And that would go for um, this section and the right to know policy in general, the other well, policies. The right to know policy doesn't get too techy. It sticks pretty much to law and case law. So that, I mean, I, I feel comfortable anyone can look at it and put their thoughts into right to know. But right to know is purely drafted from a case law, regulation, um, statutory. This does get into some specific high tech issues, which you know, there. I went through some of the federal code with that. It's pretty, it's pretty cumbersome stuff. So I, I would welcome a second set of eyes just from the technology sphere of things to jump in and look at. I think that's great. And my suggestion for the right to know policy would be just because of our archival system and uh, the attempt to uh, draw information from that source. So the right to know policy would be important in that manner. Yeah, for I him to review be, that. Should be open setting. Everything should fit together like a puzzle. It's a lot. One of the big goals when you go through and try to update all these policies is you don't end up with these contradictory documents where everything at once significantly dated, one contradicts the other. I want everything to flow nicely. And that, that that's the making of a successful modernization effort. So your you. recommendation is to go ahead and pass the guest terms of well, the internet use policy. Pending, pending bill approval. Yes. Right, um, at the next meeting, then absolutely. Through. And then the right to know policy is one we talked about last week or maybe the week before. Yes. Is there anything changing in that that you recommend before we In terms it? of the drafted policy, I'm not revising anything in there. I've had feedback of various people, it's all been positive. I'm welcome to, if anyone has anything that they want to tweak, that's fine. Um, any, any suggestions were incorporated into the latest version that was reviewed at the work session that everybody has and everybody's seen. Um, so if there's anything between now and the next meeting, um, I'm, please let me know. Because, but as far as getting this matter handled with the rates policy, and reimbursement, the internet policy, and any tweaks you like to know, there's absolutely no issue with getting that done in time for the next meeting. But I would like to know <coughs> as soon as possible to so keep that the case. Sure, I don't have anything. I, I just have one question. When you say guest terms, is this also for our employees? This does not touch on employee. Again, and you said that would be handled in the policy? I think handbook. that any, everything touching employees specifically should remain in the employee handbook. That's our kind of binding contractual relationship between county and employee. I mean, this covers every guest, every device, but I think specific terms should be lodged in the employee handbook. Um, I did send Mark an email about that. He said to shoot over anything because it would be. I, again, kind of like with the, the, these terms with Bill, I would not recommend <coughs> going and putting final passage, final ink on anything until our assigned labor council has taken a look at it. Otherwise, no purpose. Well, I would agree because if you open this up to guests to be able to utilize the internet, your employees then will have access to that. So it would seem prudent to do the employee handbook then in coordination with this. Yes, yes. again, everything COVID said. Yeah, I don't, I, I think the, um, there are kind of two issues. One is, is this is just for like the people that generally, like vendors that show up that want to do a presentation and need to use the internet temporarily. And we have no guest Wi-Fi, so. Um, this would be in preparation. This would be in preparation for that. I think that it, to get to open Wi-Fi up to the public and therefore the employees as well would be, um, and that's something that Bill's looked at previously. So even if we took this to him and talked to him about it, you know, that would so when, once this is, is passed, if somebody um, <clears throat> needs to access the internet, how do they know what our policy is? Uh, I like the way that McKean County did it, and this is the most frequent way. If you're a new user, you go, you click, or you can even do every time you log on. I mean, yeah. obviously, employees like can be, really as a separate policy can be taken out of that. But if you're someone who walks into the courthouse and whether you're on your phone, you're trying to the internet or tablet. A lot of times I'm in the attorney's room at these places trying to get some work done in my dead hours. Every time you go in, you find the network, you click, you um, 
it's a variety of two things. You either get cleared from a password from the pathology, pathology. In some courthouses, it's just public. You don't need to enter the password. But no matter what one it is, the terms come up. You have to do the I have read, I agree, click, confirm. Again, there's some variations in there between throwing in a password that is purely public. Um, there's variations between one time and being recognized, which is definitely more Bill's Avenue to set that up, or uh, having to reconfirm every time, every time you log on. But I mean, that's generally the how that's done. So you haven't incorporated those rules in this. Well, that, that's more technological. I reserve the right to do that. I say either way. We can do okay. either way. So, they could pass this as is, and then it just gets copied over onto the. I mean, this is the agreement, whether it's in paper form or digital. Yeah, and obviously anything passed, we should have online. I mean, everything that, we, that I'm doing that's, that's presented to you in paper, I feel should be posted online, transparent, public, everything like that. Yeah. Okay, good. Anything else on the right to know slash internet usage? Very good. Uh, redevelopment task force. That would be Commissioner Agerson. I wanted to have a more complete presentation on this today, but with um, budgeting and everything else, we've been incredibly busy. So, um, right now we're obviously involved in the marketing task force that um, consists of seven people, including myself. Um, we've had three public meetings. We'll have our final three. Um, this month, December, January, to then produce a report for the county, uh, for the commissioner's office, in order to offer recommendations on how to promote and, and develop the county. Um, that group, uh, in my opinion, has, has fared very well. Um, the information that we pulled out of the group has been very informative, very creative. Uh, there are a lot of solutions that they've developed that I think are um, gonna be very helpful um, across the board to the commissioner's office and to other organizations inside and outside of the courthouse. So, um, so since that's gone as well as it has, in my opinion, um, I wanted to address some other issues that keep popping up in various areas uh, with different groups that we're involved with that um, address um, property in, in a variety of different ways. So, and, and basically this group will address um, three or four tasks that I want to lay out for everybody. Um, I'm, I'm still in the process of revising the resolution and I wanted to have a white paper for you but I'm not finished with it yet. So, the, the main issue that's gonna be addressed by this redevelopment <coughs> task force is blight. Um, that's gonna be the, the, the top one and um, and it was kind of the impetus for generating the resolution and for um, kind of having a property task force to begin with. And I just, as I've worked on this, it's just expanded. So um, our blight process was created in 2009, 2008. Um, and basically in 2008, the county created a blight property ordinance, a blight property review committee, and the redevelopment authority, which constitutes the current process for blight in the county. Since that time, there's been no um, major review or renovation to that ordinance or the process itself. Um, as a result, numerous people from all three committees, or from the blight property committee, the review committee, um, the planning commission, um, and the redevelopment authority have all I've, I've had conversations with all of them. I've also had conversations with realtors and um, the people that are part of uh, um, the um, EOC and others about um, the, the blight process overall, um, and both inside the city, outside the city, and all of them have, have independently voiced concerns about you know how that process is run. Not that the process is bad, but that we don't do as much as we could do with the blight process, or that um, th there are a lot of things that are kind of left on the table, or a lot of opportunities that are lost. Um, so everybody kind of independently brought up issues with it, and so as a result, I felt like it would be an important thing to put a group together in order to discuss that topic um, in, in, in a high level of detail, and to again produce recommendations to the commissioner's office and to the county to 
figure out ways to improve that process, make it more dynamic and make it more um, useful to the people of Warren County. <coughs> so I started with the blight process. Um, there are a lot of um, legal elements related to that that I think need to be analyzed as a part of this. And I think that there are, there are a lot of things that we can do differently. So I don't think that it'll be too hard to pull that information together. Um, the people that I've already discussed about being on this committee have, have offered numerous recommendations in and of themselves periodically. This will be a way to collect those recommendations. Second item that the um, redevelopment task force will be dealing with is tax claim. Um, currently the county's tax claim process is, um, you know, is, is completely legal and justified Again, this is another issue where there are a lot of recommendations, a lot of things that can be done with tax claim that are currently not being done in order to better manage property within the county um, for, for a variety of reasons, whether it's for redevelopment, whether it's for blight, whether it's, um, uh, you know, either one of those two. A third is housing, is a general uh, to discuss housing in the county. Um, this includes uh, transitional housing and also treatment um, treatment housing options within the county. Analyze those. Uh, we have, I, I, you know, there through EOC and the various housing committees and a number of other and human services and a number of other organizations. There's been a continuous discussion about the challenges in housing within the county. Um, the goal, I think, the goal here would be. To uh, get a list, to get to really analyze the housing situation within the county, and again review it, make recommendations to the commissioners and to the county in general as to how to more efficiently utilize housing, uh, and take the 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 areas that we have now that are that are redevelopment ready and put them in a position to be redeveloped, or um, you know figure out ways to use them in other ways that'll be more productive. Um, so, and then there are just a few quick notes that I want to make related to these three issues. Um, the first is that uh, it, it's apparent to me, it might not be apparent to others, I'm, I, or I'm, I've had other people mention the, the, these issues. Warren County has had traditionally what is my opinion a hands-off um, view of, of property um, in the sense that uh, it feels like there are lots of different situations where we have properties that are available within the county or um, situations where um, a property is in transition and we've generally taken a hands-off approach to it or hadn't had a process to really address it and it'll get taken by a developer or a, 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 third, a party that you know, maybe doesn't want to have anything to do with the property, and then it becomes dilapidated, or it you know continues through the tax claim process. Um, the goal here is to come up with recommendations to help the county potentially be more proactive in its approach to dealing with property. Um, when it comes to the blight issues um, within the county, uh, this is another situation where generally the county, in my opinion, has taken a hands-off approach. You know. And so you have properties that are perpetually in either a state of blight or constantly are going through the tax claim process. And we've got to figure out a way to take whatever portion of those properties and make them usable. Um, and, and then the other bottom line issue is, is that everybody is aware that we have a population decline within the county and also a decline in um, employment and, and income. And so as a result, that's naturally going to create a distressed market where uh, there's going to be challenges to property maintenance, you know, especially with an aging population. And so the goal here is to, uh, for the first time in a few years, or at least since the um, Blight Property, Blight Review Committee and Redevelopment Authority were developed, to have a, a, a deep dive into the, the, the general view of property within the county, how it's managed through the various tools that the government and the county has at its disposal. So 
And just a couple of things about the committee. This, this group is, is naturally gonna have to be a bit bigger than the marketing task force. The marketing task force is only seven people. I'm expecting this group to be um, probably 11 members, maybe more. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the, the number of organizations that just have to naturally be included in it. Um, the, so far, I have eight members that have agreed to be on the committee. Um, I, I have three that are, well, I have a couple that I'm, I'm in the process of asking, but I haven't gotten a confirmation on. I don't think that it'll be too hard to get 11. So some of the groups that are going to be involved in this, um, the WCCBI, um, the Blight Committee, there are members from the Blight Committee that are going to be on it, the RDA, um, there are city personnel, and um, two different solicitors are going to be on the group. Um, members from planning and zoning, um, and then there are also municipal officials that have agreed to be on yeah. the on the group. I'll have a final list. By I actually already contacted all those people. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, like I said, I, and all of them have agreed um, and, and have been very in, interested and excited at the prospect of taking a look at this. A lot of that has to do with. Um, the, like I said, the process that we have currently kind of silos the responsibilities between a lot of different groups. Mm -hmm. And so it, to some degree, it's very difficult for them to coordinate or to have a coordinated effort to reform the, the process. So yeah, so I, there are two or three that I still have to um, uh, communicate with and, and get a final um, okay that they're willing to work on the group. My goal is to have this group start up in January, um, maybe February, but it'll probably be January, February, March, and April. I'm <coughs> setting a four-month window for it because I think I don't think that this will take six months to do. Um, mostly because a lot of the stuff that is related to this is legal in nature, so you either can do it or you can't do it. Um, and and most of the recommendations that I think the group will produce are things that are already, people have already made recommendations on it. It's just a matter of codifying it in a document that we can share with the community and amongst ourselves in order to review the information. So it'll be four months, it should be done in April. Um, this group may end up the same way as the marketing task force in the sense that the group may decide to, to try to push it to be six months. Um, if that's the case, then I'll revise the resolution before we were to pass it. Um, uh, but I think the four months is more than enough. Everybody that I've talked to feels like four months is enough. Um, there are people that I think are going to, that are already working on information for this group as a part of um, um, the development. The other thing, the other reason I think that this will be fairly quick is, is that it's, it's, although there are some creative elements in it, it's not as um, abstract as, mar you know, the whole notion of marketing. So I think that, um, I, I don't know that there's as much of a need to be, to have a bunch of creative thinkers. <laughs> so, so that's it. So January to April, um, I will have a resolution to you within the next day. I think I'm, I'm mostly done with it. I just didn't want to present an incomplete um, resolution uh, to the board. Uh, and then my hope is is to have, a, to, if everybody's comfortable with it, to have it put on the agenda for the next public meeting and then vote it on. Okay. Any questions? Any public questions? Very good, thanks. So let's, speaking of that, jump to the um, agenda for next Wednesday. As a reminder, Monday's work session is canceled due to the fact that at least two of us will be at CCAP. Right? Yeah. <coughs> uh, so currently I have the development task force, hotel and or city, whatever, meal reimbursement, or anything. Uh, right to know policy, internet usage policy. When do we pass the 2018 meeting agenda? Do that now or at the last meeting? That's not really passed. It gets advertised in December. Okay. Um, we won't be doing the wellness committee thing. Is there anything else that's going to be coming before the board for that once the upcoming wellness meeting? I believe there is a public hearing 
on CDBG funding. Okay. Oh, and um, 911 contracts. Thank you, Attorney Drew. Um, the way back in, I want to say February or March, we had um, an agreement with the landowner that one of our 911 towers is on. There's still, there's still another 911 tower that straddles two properties. I know I've brought it up several times. We finally had the agreement before us. Um, I have not approached the property owners to see if they're ready to sign them with the language, but I have spoken with them uh, in the past about um, leasing their property to us. Currently, we have 911 towers on their, on their parcels with a handshake, but no written contract that we can find. So I'd like to remedy that at the next public meeting. And we have talked about that at nauseam before. I <clears throat> don't think we need to, I assume you're still all in agreement. Very good. Uh, anything else that's going to be brought up for Wednesday's meeting? The solid waste plan will not be ready right now. No. Um, December 4th work session? Well, when is the, what, Mr. Abel, why don't you go ahead and describe your request? Um, I sent an email to all the commissioners this morning. I just happened to have some copies that Thank you. might make it easier for you to take a look at. Um, there's a uh, request by the foreign generating station that's in Starbrick, kind of all over township, uh, to modify a minor modification of their operating permit. Uh, a lot of people don't even know that that uh, generating station has been operating. It, it basically is a peak uh, demand type station, so um, all the air conditioners are running in Buffalo and Pittsburgh, I think, kicks in and operates. Uh, the problem with that station is that it does not comply with Clean Air Act standards. <coughs> The only way that it's allowed to operate is through this averaging system. Mm -hmm. 
Pennsylvania that this same company owns. <coughs> and the average, uh, the, uh, uh, the pollution together so that if there's a higher or low, it doesn't really affect the average. So in other words, uh, this station could be allowed to operate even though it is a polluting generating station. It's uh, polluting outside of bounds of the current uh, air quality standards. <coughs> that, by the way, is that averaging, uh, system averaging is kind of, um, it, it's, it's something that DP allows, but it's, uh, I think, saying calling it legally dubious is probably accurate. I don't know that it's going to have to in court. Um, but for the people in Warren County, I think the, the health and public health and safety issue has to do with whether or not we want to bear the brunt of um, the health effects. Um, it, it's clearly one of the situations where the bad effects stay in Warren County. I'm not sure if there are really any good effects that the county gets from that. <coughs> As I understand, there are only two employees of that operating station and other uh, duties, including when that station operates. Uh, the other thing I'm not sure about is whether or not they're going to expand operation. Uh, last year, they operated for 56 hours, but um, we don't know how many hours it might operate. So that could increase. We don't know what other stations are going to um, be closing. Uh, these are all pretty much privately owned or owned in the, in the uh, uh, public utility sector. So uh, unless someone has a really good picture of which ones are, are opening and or which ones are coming online, which ones are closing, we really can't predict how many hours that money operate. And then we don't know what the going to be like, and there are other factors that are determined. So, I, I don't understand at least one big thing, which is that you're saying it could be averaged amongst many different um, facilities. Mm -hmm. Ours is not going to go over the limit because it's so seldom used. You're saying that the pollution is really happening elsewhere. So what's our concern? No, what I'm saying is that, um, let's say, a, uh, Per hour basis, we <coughs> turn on the more generating station. It, it, it does not meet on an hourly basis the allowable level of contaminants. Great. However, if you include it with nine or ten other generating stations that are below, uh, and that's because we are in oil. So the coal, the original facility is not used at all anymore. Correct. The permit is actually for that, from what I understand. Uh, that may be the and case. the reason that the DEP has allowed that to keep up, or I suppose why the company has continued to apply for the same permit, is um, probably because of that averaging. Right. right. Because they have no intentions, they don't even have anything there that's capable of firing up the old generating equipment. That's so correct. It's currently only the oil base. It's oil, there's an oil turbine and there's a gas operator turbine. Both of which do not comply with Clean Air Act standards. Even though they're new. I can't explain that. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know how new they are. Um, but they have this compared to the original. <laughs> they, they actually compare those in, in Canada. They mm -hmm. used to be a uh, uh, power station, you know, station by station. Mm -hmm. So um, the other thing that that makes this complex is that uh, the state, of course, town, township is in the attainment area for sulfur dioxide pollution. And uh, that uh, state implementation plan was just currently, or was previously approved now with EPA for federal approval. As I understand it, that requires that new sources, and again, we might get into a legal uh, question of whether or not this is a new source or whether or not this requires an additional uh, amendment to the SIP that's already at EPA. But it might. In fact, I think that's what I was told in uh, in the Alpha Search process in the, at uh, EP. So there's that complexity. It, it just 
seems uh, like it would make sense to make sure that whatever happens at that generating station is in compliance with the SIP that they just negotiated. Right. Well, as we've said at least a couple times in the past, this board has no control over air, water, or other quality. Um, that said, there is, you know, there could be a compelling reason for us to be informed about what the EPA is regulating. So I'm not opposed to John McCoy giving a presentation, of course, with the expectation that this board cannot do anything about it. Well, with this board, it um, should be, I think, concerned about, and is concerned about, is public health and safety. And um, we do not elect um, the folks who work at the EP. Um, and um, I think the county has a self interest in understanding what the EP is doing. Uh, this is affecting the citizens of the county. Um, and I think you have a lot of say about what the EP does here. For example, the public processes that the EP has for this sort of thing. I don't know how many of you saw the public notice in the newspaper. We didn't. When is the comment period closing? Uh, that's a good question, too, because for it, uh, it's probably the next week. Uh, because it depends on when they actually submit it. Mm -hmm. The permit to be, be it's yeah. not based on when the, the notice is published in the right. newspaper. It's probably 30 days, and that was October 31st, was it? October 30th. It's 21 days from that date. That's what I would call it. But they didn't actually turn that to me, so I, I think it's exactly right. The point is that if DEP is not requiring, or if they're only requiring the very, very minimum for the you know, legal minimum for public processes, especially with these kinds of questions that are extremely complex, scientific, um, then I think it's incumbent on DEP to explain to <coughs> the citizens who are mostly affected by it what actually they're doing, why they're doing it, and what the health effects would be. So I think that in that regard, I think our township supervisors and the county commissioners can ask DPP to uh, do better than they've been doing in the past. Have you asked our legislators in the area if they've been involved with the questioning? Their motives here. I have not on this issue yet, but I intend to. Um, I didn't really receive uh, any kind of feedback from previous communication with them regarding the sulfur dioxide SIP. So, uh, except um, some verbal comments that suggested that uh, one person I talked to was just not interested. So, um, you're my local elected official, uh, and uh, I'm hoping that. Um, at this level of government, even though it's not technically your jurisdiction, uh, there are lots of things that county government can do to improve the process. Well, um, I can tell you that I, when they went for the permit two years ago, uh, that I went down and met with DEP on this third property. And um, I think that that was a rude awakening to the fact that the DEP is very much under the governor's office and they did not care at all <laughs> what I wanted to know. Uh, um, so I don't think that we really can be very helpful, but if, if, if it seems agreeable to the board, I'm not opposed to having um, Mr. Gustafson, was it, uh, come be invited to our next meeting to present on it. And I think consequently, I think you're asking that the comment period be extended beyond our next work session. So, <clears throat> we've already established that the next work session would be December 4th. That means it would be extending, at minimum, a couple weeks. The common period, most likely, is not going to be an issue, I would hope. I would hope not, but that would be an interesting test of whether or not they're interested in actually trying to inform the public mm. uh, with uh, a real sincere effort at public um, information or whether or not they're simply doing the minimal legal uh, compliance. <clears throat> I'd be willing to 
in your presentation be interested in hearing what they have to say? Okay. Um, Commissioner Morrison, do you have any? I'm very interested in hearing what they have to say. All right. So, um, will the Chief Clerk contact Mr. Edgerson and request his presence at the December 4th meeting and consequently ask that the comment period be extended beyond that date? Any questions for Mr. Abel? You said Scott Hutchison? No, Mr. Gustinson from the DEP. Although Senator Hutchinson may have kind of <laughs> probably caused DEP to be more interested in coming. <laughs> <coughs> Anything <coughs> else from the board or public comment? Okay, <coughs> very good. Uh, so we were actually on commissioners agenda. Anything else that needs to be brought to the agenda meeting on Wednesday for subsequent work sessions? All right. Hearing none, is there anything scheduled as we wanted to raise? Of course, we're going to CCAP. Um, so I'm, I'm leaving on Saturday. We'll be on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We'll be back on Wednesday for the commissioner's meeting. And then I'm I'm leaving almost immediately after that meeting for uh, Thanksgiving break. This Friday I'll be out for the comprehensive manual task force in Harrisburg. Okay. So next week I'll be in all week. Okay. Yeah, next week will be. I'm sorry. The following week we'll need to focus heavily on the budget. <clears throat> Christmas parade and the Yellowstone Christmas things are the only other kind of public events that I have on my calendar in the next couple weeks. Okay. Are there any of you who signed up for the work session that's down the days in on the 15th that aren't going, that aren't able to cancel reservations? I'm still going. You're still going? Okay, and you're going to Pam? No. Here. I canceled. You canceled? Okay. I canceled. Is it Jeff, are you still going? Mm -hmm. Okay. Were you able to cancel reservations? Or yes. No? Oh, okay. I was just going to ask if there was an unused reservation. I was going to suggest taking Angela, but they've all been canceled. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with you taking Angela. It seems to make sense. You can get her in. Are there, yeah, I mean, are there reservations that at least that stand G with them that they wouldn't? Probably not. I would very much favor anyone in the fiscal department as well. Okay. How about Treasurer's Office? Yeah. I think that Treasurer's out this week. When's the he'll meeting? be back tomorrow. Wednesday. Oh, he'll be back tomorrow. tomorrow? As far as I know, he'll be okay. back he tomorrow. It's Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so it'll be you, me, probably Angela, and maybe some of the Okay. Good. Anything else schedule wise? <coughs> Department or committee updates? Any public comment? Very good. Anything else to bring? I'm yeah. going to bring up the new old business that um, they're requesting that you move the smoking area, that the smoke is rolling in the windows. Oh, yeah, what are we going to do about that? So, when we talked about Just because I'm a new guy and they thought, well, let's see. But yeah. <laughs> no, we're. Um, the, the original plan was when the parking lot was going to get redone to generate a pad out um, next to where um, the shed is essentially and then make that the only smoking spot in the county. I think that in the short term, uh, just to alleviate you know, the situation, because everybody that we've talked to was supportive of removing smoking or moving it away from the main building. There are even people that advocated for completely eliminating the county property. Um, so I think the compromise that we came up with, at least in the short term, was the idea of um, maybe painting a space of <coughs> the parking lot on that corner anyway and then just moving the receptacles there and then keeping them there because then they'll be far enough away that no one will move them back to the building and then basically notify all the personnel and then also um, have the, the, the signage done to say that there's no smoking like next to the building and that that space over there is the only space for smoking. All, all that would have to do happen in the short term is to basically talk to the maintenance manager 
and have the receptacles moved and then at the same time have like a space painted um, to show that that's where you can stand um, in order to, to smoke and then move it away from the building. Okay, if you're giving me the green light to do it, I have to I do don't, it. Does anybody else have a problem with that? Yeah. And at some point, we'd like to give them some cover. Well, and I, that's the one thing I looked at when I went out there, but there's no cover there either. So well, I thought maybe that's just, why they originally. Just as, just as someone that, that was a, that is a, a former smoker, um, I'm not that worried about cover. <laughs> oh no, it's <laughs> out in the middle of the yeah. night. <laughs> Most <laughs> no, people, yeah. they don't. Have, they there's don't no have cover now. There. I mean, no well, that's what I looked. That's why I thought maybe it was there. I thought yeah. maybe there was an overhang. But yeah, really and, and, and frankly, like at the this stage it's it's more convenient for the people who don't smoke in the building especially during the summer when the windows are open you know um, I, you know I, I, I think that smokers should be afforded some opportunity to you know smoke when they need to um, but at the same time like it should uh, you know be a you know be a problem. A non -smoker. yeah well I mean there are several people and, and actually this side is worse I mean I know that we've had a um, from downstairs, but um, this whole side of him here, um, especially like Ed's office, I mean, he can't have his windows open in the summer because everybody stands right out there and all the smoke goes in the window and it's really, you know, so that's not good. So everybody can go over there. It'll be, I think that'll be fine. There'll be, there'll be some complaints, I'm sure, from people in the basement who kind of smoke, you know, right here, but, um, you know, it's the times. Okay, I'm fine with that. So Keith, do you I'm mind um, working with Matt? Not at all. And to, to, to work out whatever you guys think is appropriate <clears throat> for that. Absolutely. And then you can handle notifying once you're done setting it up or figuring out how it should be set up, notifying the, the, the everybody, you know, of the change. Very good. The Anything else? The, only, the, the, the one thing I wanted to just quickly mention is, is that the engineer came in and worked with the contractor on the boiler. Um, it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, they rearranged a few things. It should, it, um, they should be able to finish the job in the same time frame. So it shouldn't. So it'll still be done here in the next yeah, few it, days, really? Yeah. Yeah. Great. So we should be good to go as far as that goes. Anything else for the good of the other? Oh, and Commissioner Eggles didn't open this now. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we're adjourned. <laughs>